It's been seven years since Apple founder Steve Jobs lost his long battle with pancreatic cancer. His life has been the subject of several films and documentaries and books. The latest is perhaps the most personal. It's a memoir from his eldest daughter, Lisa Brennan Jobs. We're going to talk to her in just a moment. But first, Lisa's complicated relationship with her father. We are calling it iPhone. Steve Jobs was the man who introduced life-changing technology to the masses, a tight-lipped tech genius with endless ambition. I don't have a daughter named Lisa. Those who have seen the 2015 film Steve Jobs know Jobs' daughter, Lisa Brennan Jobs, as a young girl desperate for validation from a father who appeared dismissive. That you knew what I was going through and you didn't do anything about it. Steve Jobs was 23 when he met his oldest daughter days after she was born to his former girlfriend, Chris Ann Brennan. Brennan Jobs says her father helped name her, but for years, and despite a DNA test proving he was her dad, he denied that. Later, he repeatedly refused to confirm that an early version of an Apple computer called Lisa was named after her. Nothing was named after anybody. It's a coincidence. In her new memoir, Small Fry, Brennan Jobs shares her perspective from life with a father who she says could be cruel to moments of shared joy at the piano or on roller skates. Brennan Jobs also describes a largely unstable childhood. At 14, she moved in with her father and his growing family, though he had one condition. She could not see her mother for six months. Brennan Jobs described that time as lonely, but sprinkled with moments of joy and belonging, painting a very complicated picture of her relationship with a man she just called Steve. And Lisa Brennan Jobs joins us now. Again, her memoir is called Small Fry. Hi, Lisa. Good morning. Hi. Good morning. Okay, father daughter relationships we know are very complicated, and yours kind of is no exception. And when I was reading this book, I have to tell you, like, I felt your pain as a little girl. And I was thinking it's hard to read parts of it. It must have been so hard to put this on paper. Was it? How was that part of it? It took a long time. And I think it was really cathartic and in some ways very joyful to go back and spend time with my young parents. I mean, they were younger than, than I am now. Mm -hmm. So I got to, it was nice to do that. But then, um, you know, and, and there is this really famous person in the story. Mm -hmm. But I think in many ways, this this coming of age story about a girl growing up in California in the 80s and 90s is also, it's also a universal story. You know, it's easy, I think, I think it's easy to forget because yeah. there's this distraction of this famous person that we all have complexity in our lives. I was struck know? by so much of it. Um, some of it was hard to read because I felt that there was extreme cruelty in certain parts of your life. There was a scene, I'm just thinking of a couple of things, where your mom was on the phone. You were just a little girl and she was begging your dad for money, like sobbing and begging. And you, as a little girl, walks, walk up and take the phone from her and say, just give, him, get, just give her some money, okay? And like hang up the phone. And I was thinking about what that little girl must have been feeling in those moments, knowing those, those things. What were you thinking then? Or what do you remember? So I remember, it, so that actually, I talked with my aunt mm -hmm. and she, and I also talked with my mother, but my aunt was the one that witnessed that scene. I don't particularly remember that, as I talk about in the book, that you know, but, but, but I wonder, like but, but moments yeah. like that. Yeah. So, uh, I don't know. I think I was kind of a tough little scrappy soul. Like, and, and I think, I think you, sometimes you save things from your past that you don't quite understand. They're like little boxes and you preserve them for later when you can unwrap them and try to understand what they meant. Did and the, I think this whole book was a way to understand. I see. Did the little girl like her dad, hate her dad, the little girl that, that we're describing. Because there's another scene in there where your mother says to your dad, hi, we need a house, could you get us this house? And he says, oh yeah, I'll get that house. And he gets it for himself. Or there are other scenes like that, that I was literally reading it, Lisa going, ouch, like ouch, if that were me, that I can't imagine what I'd be feeling in that moment. Um. So wait, what was the first one you said? It was about the, it was about the house or about denying paternity. It, oh, I guess yeah, I any think, of the specifics. I, yeah, I think that some of the, some of the stories mm -hmm. were 
were really difficult. And yeah. and I and, and you were asking what the little girl felt yeah. about this man. And I imagine, yeah. I mean, I remember feeling just profound love and admiration because he did have these. We had so we did have joyful, tender, dear moments together. You know, he he made the decision to come back and get to know me after he hadn't really been around when I was younger. And but then also I must have felt, I must have felt so confused and and angry you yeah. know i bet it was some combination of these things which yeah tell me what was the most loving thing your father ever did for you i think that um gosh it's you know i was gonna say coming back to get to know me after he hadn't been around when i was little mm -hmm. but then i also wanted to say one day he came to a a performance that my my boyfriend was in a play and was freezing cold and he didn't have a sweater and only he and I can know how cold that night was and he didn't complain and he sat through the whole thing because he knew how important it was at to the, me at the end he was he was dying yeah. and you were at his bedside and there, a lot was being made of when he said something to you like you smell like a toilet um, I read that and I said oh what could that have been was that a cruel statement did you think or was he you know his personality. What was he doing well, there? I have to say, I have to answer yeah. your question with it, which is that at the very end, he was so, so apologetic about the times we had missed together. Mm -hmm. And he kept on saying, the thing he kept on saying was, I owe you one and I'm so sorry. Did you forgive but him? I think, I think not at the time. I mean, I, I felt a little bit paralyzed. Do you now? Do you forgive him now? In many ways, yes. I think I, I, I understand him more and understand myself more. But the toilets, <laughs> I have to be clear about the toilet phrase, mm -hmm. which is, I think things have been made of that. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I really did. I mean, I explained in the book, I was spraying myself with this natural rose water that was kind of turning over and right. over. And so, so even though it wasn't particularly a nice phrase, it was actually true. It was a true phrase, you the, know. The day so, your, your yeah. dad passed, what did you lose that day? Um, well, that's a, that's a personal thing. I lost the chance to add, add more friendship with him, which is what I told him in the book, mm -hmm. is that I, I wished that we'd had more time together. And, and I think he, he wished that too, because we did like each other. And when we spent time together and we got along, it was kind of great. So I wish there'd been more time. It's fair. It's so. It's such a complicated book. I just want to read what some members, some members of your family, I guess, weren't so fond of the book. She wrote some. This was written. Lisa's part of our family, so it is with great sadness that we re, we read her book, which differs dramatically from our memories of those times. The portrayal of Steve is not the husband and the father we knew. So I, I, I was thinking about it, and I've been written about since I was three years old. There was that article in Time magazine, and then and then there have been books, and there have been movies since, and. And um, so I know that it can be really difficult to read about your own life and your own experience, a slice of it in someone else's mm -hmm. words. It can be hurtful. But when I was thinking about writing this book, I, I realized that I believe people have the right to tell their own story as honestly and accurately as they can. And so um, in this case, you know, this book is, it's about so much more mm -hmm. than, than, than my father although of course it involves mm -hmm. my complicated family, but it's also a coming of age story about me. And so, you know, if you're gonna read the 400 pages, you have to sort of buckle mm -hmm. up for also yeah. whispering in libraries and dangly earrings and yeah. adolescent angst and yeah. all, all of that. There's a lot in this book. Lisa, thank you. I know it wasn't easy to share your story and we do appreciate it. Thank you. Again, the book is called Small Fry. You can find more about it on today.com shop. <laughs>